boom, 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 having trouble getting in brother i think we are there <laughs> let me double check <laughs> man come on now it's friday night people and you know what we're doing it's a beautiful night here in the suburb of philadelphia and my man ali hackett is ready to do what he do to you tonight <laughs> talk to the people's ali hackett tell them what you're doing brother Good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening. Uh, thanks for bringing me in after I did my solo, Mark. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, my brother. Good evening, everybody, on this beautiful Friday evening. I'd like to welcome you to the show that we do each and every Friday night. Yours truly and the Magnificent Seven who are waiting in the wings to get started. Tonight being the last um, Friday in June, Black Music Month. We're gonna celebrate with a, a, a outstanding guest. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say, outstanding guest. If you read the clues, some, some of you may already know or have an idea who it is, it doesn't matter. The fact is that the, the individuals are gonna be here very shortly and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. And again, this is a most magnificent month being Black Music Month. And again, I tip my hat to Kenny Gamble, Leon Huff and those folks that started this movement. I do want to say something real quickly, though. Uh, my good friend Mark Abrams had the opportunity uh, a couple of weeks, uh, two weeks ago. I was uh, being interviewed by a gentleman who is a eight-time award-winning Grammy journalist, and I tell you the end. If some of most of you have seen it, I, I hope you did anyway. It's on uh, it's on YouTube, and it's a great, great interview. Well, he did yesterday. Had the opportunity to interview the young lady who was 94. Mark, am I right? 94 or 97? 94, either 97. Yeah, Opal's um, 94. 94, okay. Who started this whole Juneteenth movement. Started the Juneteenth movement. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful lady. Wonderful interview. And I'm hoping someday soon, I will be able to give her a hug for what she's done. This Juneteenth is just off the chain. It's just really good. It's, it's a great, great, great celebration. And then on top of that, um, it's it's a Black Music Month, which is a must. Hear what I'm saying to you, a must in the musical industry. Black music is a must in the musical industry. All right, no preaching. Let's get started. Mark, would you kindly bring in the Magnificent Seven? <laughs> or those that are here, because I know one or two of them won't be here tonight. The magnificent folks are fresh off their tour of the latest candy stores in Delaware County, and they are coming in live and living color and hyped up on sweets. <laughs> I know, I know, a couple of them do like the sweets too. Rita and and uh, and uh, and uh, Sharon, I know they like the sweets. I know they like the sweets. Oh boy, look at this crowd, man! Look at this crowd here. Look at this crowd here. Uh, wait till everybody get unmuted, and then we'll talk to uh, we'll welcome everybody and get started. All right. Think Donna's already unmuted. Hey, gorgeous, how are you? Hey. hey. How you doing? Hello there. I'm hanging in there. Good, good. Diane, Hi. how are you, sweetheart, down I'm in Florida? I'm fine. I'm fine. I might lose y'all because we it's storming down here again. 
Oh, is it really? Wow. Yes. Okay. All right. So well, I might listen. lose you. Be safe. That's all we care about. We That's need right. you to be yeah. safe. Yeah. Rosie, That's how are it. you, sweetheart? Doing great, thank you. How are you? Doing good. Not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Good. Rita, how you doing, babe? I'm good. How are you? How's everybody? Hey, Rita. How you doing, baby? Good. Rita. Hey, hey, so how you doing, baby doll? I'm well, thank you. Good, good. Drew, what's happening? How you doing? My brother, always a pleasure. Good to see you. And Sharon, the professor, how are you, sweetheart? I'm good. How's everybody doing? Doing good. Hey, thank you, man. professor. I like that hair, you, professor. I was say, like the hair. Thank you. Hair. I got to get like my hair together. Good. I like the hairstyle. All hair right. All right. Uh, yes. Now that we've greeted everybody, um, I want to tell you guys that um, apparently I must have made this too easy. I must have made this too easy. Um, but that's all right because you know what I'll do next week. <laughs> all right. Why are you, why are you saying that, Ali? What, baby? Why are you saying that you and made geez, it too easy? Somebody said I called him. Well, because as soon as I put it up, you somebody no texts me with the right answer. Well, that's somebody. <laughs> that ain't everybody. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. You know what, Donna? I just like to see you sweat. That's all. <laughs> I got something for you, though. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the clues, and then we're gonna get started. Uh, a jazz drummer, composer, arranger, producer, big hit on his own, especially love ballad. Mm -hmm. Early age drummer sat in at a uh, sat in on a John Coltrane performance while the individual was in middle school. That is a heck of a compliment, right yes, there. It is. Oh, wow. Studied at Temple and Juilliard Music School. Worked with many, many of the uh, great talented artists. First recording came out in 1967. The genres that they cover are jazz, jazz fusion, smooth jazz, <laughs> R&B, and soul. The question is, who am I or who are we? Rosie, what you got for us, baby? All right, Dad. I knew you called me first, baby, Dad. I knew you would, Dad. And I'm going to tell you, I like, I like, I like, I like the way you got the hat tilted to the side. There you, know you go. Me I too. Like me too. Me too. All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Boo. But I'm going to tell you, Ali, it was, it was kind of easy, but it wasn't. But anyway, I figured it out last night. Okay. okay. So, right. and like I said, and I'm going to say, and if it's not, it should be. I'm going to tell you now, it should be. But I'm saying it's my fellow Piscean, my fellow Piscean, my starship, my Mr. Norman Connors. That's what I'm saying. And if it's not, it should be because I'm loving. That's what it should be. My okay. Piscean brother. Yes. Okay. All right. I got him right here. Okay. Rita, what you got, baby doll? I have Norman Connors also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, Diane, what you got? Norman Connors. Yes. Wow. 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 All right, let's let's go to the little fireball here, Donna. What you got? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I actually got it today. I didn't oh, okay. not call you on purpose. I'm, like, I'm not calling. I'm gonna get this. <laughs> and so um, it is Philadelphia Zone. You are my starship, Norman hey. Connors. That's who right. I think. Okay. Pick. Okay. <laughs> Hazel, what you got? Norman Connors. Okay. All right. Drew, where you at? Holly, you may or may not be happy to know I had this figured out in less than 10 seconds. There's only one answer, Norman Connors. Mm -hmm. If not by the albums behind me, this scarf the man is known for. He's a, he's a dresser of scarves. So that was, okay. that was the only name to consider, period. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Professor? Valentine Love, Norman Connor. Hey. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Mark, has our guest arrived yet? No, he's still eating some chitlins somewhere on the side. <laughs> you know what? He got chitlins and, and crackers. What kind of brother is this? <laughs> Ali, you, Ali, you didn't ask Michelle. Oh, oh. Michelle's not going to be with us tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. I should have announced that first. Right. She's not going to be with us tonight. She's she with, with our guest tomorrow that she's preparing for. So she's not yeah. going to be here tonight. She did, she did call me and let me know. Uh, right. Okay, well, let me say this while we're waiting for our guest. Everybody is 100% correct. Uh, that's why I said I think I made it too easy. This is one of the first <laughs> no, time everybody got no. it. Everybody yeah. got it. Well, thank and you for giving us a break, brother. <laughs> but I had to look a little bit. I had to search a little bit. Okay. I had to narrow okay. it down a little bit. I did. Okay. Um, we're, we're, um, I don't know. I, I think Norman is in the studio and I'm waiting He's for him to try to finish up some stuff. So we're waiting for him to get through to come on. He knows to come mm -hmm. on. He knows what time and he knows what we're doing. 
So in the interim, what we can do is go through each one of us and talk about him and what you like about him and what happened. Mark, he's not here yet. There he is. Oh, there, he is. there he is. There he is. Mr. Connor, can you Yeah, we're waiting for his audio to come in. We're waiting for his audio to come in. But that's what, what so our, chance, our plans have changed. So now right. he's here so we can talk about him mm -hmm. and to him. Mm -hmm. He's sitting back chilling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to keep signaling him and let him know that uh, he's got to unmute. Yep, yep. He got some chilling juice on his hey. There he is. <laughs> unmute. Stormy, can you hear me? Yeah. How you doing, my brother? Hey, hey. wonderful. Everybody, let's give Norman Collins a nice round of applause, if you will, yeah, please. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, my fellow Pisces. <laughs> yes. My fellow All right. Norman, it's, 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 it's a pleasure to have yes. you join yes. us, most mainly because of the fact, can you hear me, Norm? Yeah, uh, I, I, I can stand and hear you better. OK, OK. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you join us uh, here at the Magnificent Seven mainly because of the fact that you are an icon and you're from Philadelphia, which most of us are pretty much in the area. So it's always good to brag about or stick your chest out about somebody from the hometown. And with you being the type of person, the icon that you are, what would I tell you when I talked to you before? We're going to let everybody ask you a question and or give a comment, and then we can go on it. But I want to welcome you on behalf of uh, being Black Music Month. You're closing out Black Music Month, and I don't think we could have closed it out with anybody better but you. Thanks. So I'm giving you a round of applause again. Right. I appreciate right. it. You're quite welcome. You're, so, Rosie, do you have a question or comment for uh, Mr. Connors? I have both. I have two. I have first, uh, Mr. Connors, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can't thank you enough because I'm a fan from way back. My mom, when she was living, was so, 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 so much a fan of yours. But I want to say something. You and I have something in common. You're a Piscean. Now, quote me if I'm wrong. March 1st, 1947. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, well, you know, I don't talk about. But I'm March 9th. talk about those kind of things, but, but oh. I am March 1st. I am March 9th. So we got that in common. We got that on March 9th. Okay. So that's why I said my fellow Piscean. And I wanted to ask you, so I love it. And I wanted to ask you about Starship. How did that come about? Because I know it's a romantic song. But what was the concept of it? Like, you are my starship and all. What was behind that there and all? Well, I would say uh, it's about how much a person can love somebody. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. and how high they could take it. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Okay, because said my starship. Okay, come take it. Yes. What it's I like, say, uh, <laughs> it's like, I love you completely. Yes. Or I love you all. I love you. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I love you completely. Or I, I love you. Yes. More than love is. Mm, 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 mm. All right, don't hyperventilate. Uh, okay. Rosie. All right, I got to school down there some there. All right. All right, but uh, thank you, Mr. Connors. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. But again, thank you. And on behalf of my mom to this, thank you, thank you, thank you. I've seen you in person with Michael Henderson and never was disappointed. So I could keep going on and on, but I'm getting too hyperventilated now. Really. Pass out uh, this, so I okay. love you. Thank Great. You. Good question, Rosie. Hey, Mark, if you can hear me, would you do me a favor and send 911 over to Rosie's house and let her calm down a little bit, please? <laughs> Here you go. Chicago Fire is on their way to you, Rosie. Here you go. I'm serious. He's, he's right. oh, Rosie. here over Norman. Oh, uh, yes. Rita, what you got for us, babe? What you got, Rita? Hi, Mr. Connors. It's a pleasure meeting you. Yes. Uh, my pleasure. I, have a, I have a question. What was it like meeting Miles Davis at as a teenager. Mm. I met Miles Davis when I was 13 years old in wow. Philadelphia at a club called The, Show, the Showboat. Mm -hmm. I was 13 and I was dressed similar to him. My mother used to work at a, uh, like a GQ clothing manufacturer mm -hmm. and she, they used to give her, her bosses used to give her uh, clothes, the free samples for nothing. And I used to come in on Saturday and, and, and put their clothes on. So I, when I was living in the projects, uh, I had like 25 and 30 suits. And, oh, and wow. And all wow. kinds of things like that. Because we got the clothes for free. Okay. Wow. So when Miles, I went to the showboat and I walked up to Miles and said, I had some drumsticks in my hand. 
I said, Mr. Davis, my name is Norman Connors, and I would like to play, play with you. And he looked at me and fell to the floor. Wow. wow. <laughs> he never seen anything like that before. Wow. wow. And I was wearing a wow. double-breasted chalk stripe suit. They probably would sell them about maybe $1,000 in the stores. Wow. And uh, black, pa black patent leather shoes. Oh, okay. And a white silk scarf. Wow. Okay. Wow. And I was okay. dressed just like him. He had a blue chalk stripe suit. Okay. Wow. Great story. Great story. So Great story. That's how I met him. And we've been, he told me when I come to New York, just knock on his door. <laughs> wow. That's what I did. Awesome. That's cool. Okay. That's very cool. Very cool. Good question, okay. Rita. Good question. Thank you. Very Diane, good. what do you got for us, baby? Good evening, Mr. Connors. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Diane. Out of all the re artists that you've recorded with, who is your favorite? Or do you have a favorite? Mm -hmm. uh, recorded, not just not just play with, but record with it, you're saying? Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. say yeah. probably um, Phyllis Hyman. And I'll rest this whole. That was my yeah, come on. Farrell Sanders. Okay. Oh, yes. 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 Wow. Mm. Wow. Yeah. They probably wow. wasn't my favorite, but I, mm -hmm. I recorded with a lot of people now. Yeah. And okay. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. okay. they, they probably was my favorite. Wow. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh Sanders is a really yeah. good one. A really good one. Absolutely. Yeah. Good question, Diane. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Yes. All right, Miss Donna, what you got, baby doll? Well, that actually was my question. What was it like playing with Phyllis Hyman or, or you know, dealing with Phyllis Hyman? But I, I just came up with another one. Because, you know, I'm fast on my toes. Okay. It's so okay. nice to meet you, um, Mr. Connors. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to know, um, at, I, think, I think I read at the age of 13 or even younger, that you actually got to play drums with John yes. Coltrane. Mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was 16. Oh, 16. So yeah, I was 16, John Coltrane. And that's when I met Farrell Sanders. It was John Coltrane, right. uh, McCoy Tyner, uh, Farrell Sanders, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it was Reggie Workman or uh, I think it was maybe Reggie Workman. Okay. And uh, I got a chance to play with him for three nights. Wow. Mm. Did they pay you? Yes. <laughs> yes, Actually, that's right. The, uh, the bass player was Jimmy Garrison. That's who it was. Okay. 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 The bass player was Jimmy Garrison. And uh, I got a chance to play with John also in New York at the Village Vanguard. Wow. At the Village? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, what a great story. Great question, Donna. Good question. So that, those were my, uh, that's the highlights of my life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank Hazel, you. Hazel, what you got, babe? Thanks, Donna. Hi, Mr. Connors. It's a pleasure to meet you. The creator has a master plan. Mm. That's one of my favorite songs. Oh, yes. What's the story behind that? Mm, mm, mm. I, oh my goodness. The story, I, I had to take it away from me. What is the story behind the creator has a master plan? Mm -hmm. What made I mean, you? It, it spells itself out. Yeah. The creator has a master plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the creator has a master, his master plan was to, I'm quite sure it was about uh, bringing, Bringing people together and doing the right thing and, mm -hmm. and about love. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yes. Yes. It's a great yes. song. It's a great song. Great song. <clears throat> great, song. great song. Great song. And that's a good question, Hazel. Um, let's take it just a little short before we go to the next remark. Are there any people in the uh, chat room that would like to say hello to Mr. Connors or have anything to say, our audience? Yes, we do. Yes. We have several folks. We have our previous. Uh, a Magnificent Seven alum, Diane Candy here. We have Annie mm -hmm. August, and we have another lady out of Georgia named Sabra Oliver. Sabra that, Oliver out of Georgia? Out of Georgia. That says that um, she has been Mr. Connor's fan, and right now she is playing 
Valentine Love, dancing with her teddy bear, and drinking some <laughs> cognac. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want no X-rated stuff here, man. Hold on. We don't want no X-rated stuff here. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. I'll go back to the waiting room. I'll be back later, guys. <laughs> well, hello here from Georgia. We wish you the very, very best. And if I can speak on me, I'm going to let Norman Common speak on his, right. his, speak his own self. Go ahead, Sarah. It's a young lady from Georgia that says hello, and she's playing Valentine Love for You right now as she's at home <laughs> dancing with a teddy bear. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, <laughs> that's Michael Henderson and Gene Korn doing a duet. Yeah. Yes, yes. Good I, I, I play drums, and I produced it and all of that. So the three of us, we had magic. We had great magic together. Mm -hmm. Michael Henderson, Gene Corn, yes. and Norman Cummings. Yes. Good, good, yes. good group. Yes. Good group. Yes. They, yes. they play that song every Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they play it more than just Valentine's Day. Right. And it's still selling. And it's still being mm -hmm. played in most of, most of you, most of the, the large cities mm -hmm. around the United States. And okay. of course. Of and course. Germany yeah. and and London and, and a lot of the European cities too. And okay. Japan. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That's great. That's great. That's great. That was like one of my my biggest hit songs. It wasn't the biggest, maybe the third biggest. Okay. Mm -hmm. It went okay. and it crossed over into R and B. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okay. All right. Well, I'm quite sure the young lady in, in Georgia appreciates that. You know what I forgot to do, Norman, and, and it, it's, it's a bad thing on my, well, not bad, but I mean, it just slipped my mind. When I talked to you earlier this week, I was going to call Jean Karn and tell her that you were going to be on. I just mm. completely forgot to do it. There's so much stuff going on. I think she's right there in Philadelphia. Well, she is, yes, yes. And she was on this show here a couple mm -hmm. of months ago. We had mm -hmm. her on the show. Right. But I was going to call her and tell her that you were my guest tonight. Nice. That's what I saw. So she could tune in and listen. But she does listen uh, occasionally. She really does. So that's my bad. That's my bad. Okay. Andrew, what you got for uh, uh, Mr. Con Mr. Connors? Mr. Connors, it is a pleasure meeting you. I have met you previously. You was always nice to me backstage, man. You even took a couple selfies, man. Thank you for your legacy and your music. Uh, what I would like to know, and so many questions to ask, but let's start with these scarves, man. What gave you the, imp uh, the inspiration with these scarves, man? Because I have several as well, and you're the inspiration, you know, seeing you on these album covers with your scarves, man. What's the story behind that, please? Well, the scarf is, uh, uh, the scarf is like, uh, when I first saw the scarf was yeah, who Miles inspired Davis. You? Who inspired you to wear scarves? Miles Davis. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, Miles Davis just always wears scarves, and I always mm -hmm. admired that. And mm -hmm. I start wearing scarves instead of ties. Mm -hmm. okay. So when I get dressed uh -huh. up, whether it's formal or whatever, I wear a scarf. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, when I started recording, uh, there was a scarf company that used to give me scarves. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I used to advertise scarves for them. Right. OK. And, and when I come out on this, this mm -hmm. particular tour, this, I'm going to do my third uh, uh, third thing after the, the pandemic. Uh, I'm going to have some T-shirts for, for sale. Some tie dye awesome. T-shirts with Norman Connors on it. Mm. OK. Awesome. 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 And it's going to be from it, a, you know, um, Yeah. And it, uh, so, so look for the T-shirts, look for the, the CDs, and look for... Um, Look for some scars. Okay. That's good. Norman Connor so, swag. What, Just what, what I'm, I'm going to do, for. Norman, is I'm going to contact Carl and get that information so we can get some for the Magnificent Seven here in Philly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Norman All right. I have a Thank new CD sir. coming out too. Okay. Okay. Very good. Right. Well, we're going to we're, we're fans. We're fans, and we're going to follow up. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Great question, Drew. Great. You had another question, or you was already right with that one? Um, now, go ahead. Go to the rest. If there's time left, I'll ask you then. Yeah, we got time to come around again. The mm -hmm. professor, okay. what you got for uh, Mr. Connors? Good evening, Mr. Connors. It is a pleasure and an honor to meet you. Mm -hmm. I have been a fan since, what, 1975 with Valentine Love. Oh, wow. That was my favorite slow jam when I was in school. And we, you know, crazy girls. 
We played it all the time. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. It's beautiful. And um, and then of course in high school, you are my starship. That was just we just died every time it came on the radio. <laughs> uh, and 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 you yes. know that's that's my biggest song. Mm -hmm. yeah. And 150 rappers just sampled it. Mm. Wow, okay. Wow. Not that yes. long ago. 150 okay. rappers okay. sampled You Are My Starship. Okay. There's all types of wow. against that song. Mm -hmm. And that nice. song is still selling. Yeah. It's still millions and it's still yes, selling. It okay. Well, whatever they Brilliant. did with it, I'm sure it ain't as good as what you guys did with it. That's right. <laughs> That's I right. appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And the gentleman right. there, I know that face. Whose face? The, the, the gentleman with, that was speaking for the lady. Oh, Andrew. Andrew. Right Andrew. With, the, with the scarf on. The scarf. <laughs> I know him. True. Yeah, I know but his face. We, he said he's been backstage with you a couple before. Yeah, he said he's been backstage with you a couple Yeah, that times. was uh, uh, two years ago in Atlantic City when you performed in Atlantic City. Oh, you wow. You took the time, man, to speak, uh, you know, take a selfie with me. You were very uh, gracious, man. I, I thank you for that. I do have that picture somewhere, but um, it's. I, I just remember that moment, man. Meeting you, it was it was awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thank okay. You. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you. I'm glad you recognize. It. I'm gonna tell you. I told you before. Magnificent Seven is no joke, man. We got to go on. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. So, Mr. Uh, Connors, my actual I'm, question. Go ahead. Um. I was going to ask who your favorite vocalist was, and now we know that. But are you still in touch with Michael Henderson and Gene Karn? And if so, on this new CD or anything in the future, will you guys work together again? Great question. Uh, I'm quite sure. As a matter of fact, the new CD, the title uh, is Royalty. That's the name of the title of the new CD. Uh -huh. And I have guests, the guest that's on it is People Bryson, mm. uh, Howard Hewitt, Gene Ooh. Corn. Oh, yes. Uh, a lady who sings with me right now, her name is Marva King. She used to sing with Prince, and she used to sing with Lionel Richie. Mm. So remember that name, Marva King. Okay. Marva King. The new star. And okay. what's the name of the CD again? Royalty. 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 Uh, yeah, it's called Royalty. I got Norman Brown is on it, Stanley Clark. Mm, wow. These are the people that I discovered. Okay. Wow. Okay. A lot of people don't know I discovered Stanley Clark. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I like Stanley Clark, yeah. but I didn't know you discovered yeah. it. And uh, oh. Norman Brown, you know him, he's the smooth jazz guitarist who yes. became a big, yes. a big yes. star. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, he after, is. After his first record. Mm -hmm. We did it with him on Mo, da Mo Jazz. Mo, Mo Jazz. Jazz. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Good question, Sharon. Wow. Good question. So that, that's just some of the people that's on the record. Okay. The Star Trek oh. Orchestra's on it. Uh, Marion Meadows, mm -hmm. saxophone, okay. mm -hmm. yes. who was with me for over 20 years. Marion Meadows, yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I have a song. You know, Angie Bofield mm. is, uh, she went down. She uh, had a couple of strokes. Yes. But we, but we did 100 concerts together before wow. she was mm. 100. Okay. In a year. One mm. of my favorites, man. And, and she's like one of my favorite people. Yeah. yeah. She's a very, very yeah. nice lady. Yes. And she she's a stylist and she has a beautiful voice. Yes, she, she does. Has, mm -hmm. She has a beautiful heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, matter of fact, Norman, last last night when we talked last night, I was on the air. I played on the show last night. I'm on your side. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. I played that song. last night. Yeah. Song. Yes, it is. Yeah, one of my favorites by her, man. Really good. Yes. Okay. Everybody, we've went around one circle. Mark, is there anybody else who's come in the chat room that would like to say hello to uh Mr. Connors? Everybody, you know, we got a chat room full of folks, and everyone is just speaking on their experiences with his various music. You know, Valentine Love, You Are My Starship, and everybody wants to tell their story. We would have to stay on until tomorrow morning to get all these <laughs> that I'm getting. 
But um, I think the best one here is the young lady is saying that um, Mr. Connor's music, which one is it? Starship mm -hmm. was in her wedding, her daughter's wedding, and her okay. son's wedding as the song that everybody danced to. Wow. That's become a wow. family mm -hmm. favorite. You are my wow. star. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. I'm going to check on it, Mr. Connor, see if they owe you some royalties for that. They played that a little <laughs> bit too much. <laughs> so you know, That's right. That. <laughs> but, they, but, they, but they're loving it. They, they'll, they'll keep it coming. I'll be back later. Okay. They All got right. some gumbo cooking. I got to go get some of this gumbo they cooking. All right. I'll talk okay. to you. Okay. All right. Okay. Wow. That's, 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 that mean, how does that, Miss uh, Norman, how does that make you feel hearing all of these accolades on that one song? It's a young lady that it was her, it was her wedding song, her daughter's wedding song, and her son's wedding song. And you know that the son and daughter had to be much younger than she mm -hmm. was for them mm -hmm. to know and understand and appreciate your music enough to choose it for their wedding song. How does that? How does that sound to you? It's well, nice. it, it it makes me feel very, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I knew that song was going to do well, but I didn't know it was going to do that well. <laughs> I didn't know 150 <laughs> young rappers, okay, and all hip, all types of hip hop people, hip hop people was going to going to record it. Okay, I had no mm -hmm. idea, right. but I'm glad they did. You know, right. I'm glad they did. <laughs> that song, like I said, the song World is still. Contracts. It's still okay. selling. That's right. right. Absolutely. A lot of people. More money in your pocket. For quite a bit. I've been traveling since I was. Uh, well, I started out with Billy Paul when I was fifteen. Wow. And wow. I traveled with him a little, and I used to belong to a group called Randolph Styles and Connors, and the, and the organ player his name was uh, uh, Luther Rand Randolph. Okay. And the, the violin player and guitarist. His name was Johnny Styles, and Connors is Norman Connors. Right. So we used to travel around with later a club in New York called, called Count Basie's. I was like 16 years old. We made a record called Crossroads. That was like the beginning. So it, it makes me feel good about the Starship because in all my travels, since it, it was recorded, people were saying uh, uh, they had babies on that song. A lot of children was born <laughs> on that song. Oh, right, right. That's all good. Yes, it is. <laughs> right. you know, people get together, like boyfriends and girlfriends, they, right. they play that song. That's, That's nice. Right. That's they right. play that song, they kiss on that song, and they make love <laughs> on that song. So it's all good to me. That's I love right. it. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a love man. I'm a music <laughs> nice. and a love man. That's what I am. All right. Nice. Love. All right. And it always got me. Mm. Yes. Got me in many doors. Okay. Because, okay. Because I have a lot of love in my heart okay. and soul. Okay. There you go. There you I'm go. quite sure y'all do too. There yeah. You go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. what you got it. Right. Got it. Well, I noticed that when you said um that it a lot of babies were born, uh Rita woke up and started laughing. Now I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I don't know what that means. Let me ask you a question. Now this is a little bit off, it, it, it pertains to your music, but it's just a little bit off. Uh, the question is simply this, somebody of your uh, caliber, caliber, and I'll use that word, somebody of your mm -hmm. caliber, you know where you rank at as far as the, in the music world. There are not too many people that rank as high as you or are over top of you in the music world. Mm -hmm. So when you get an urge to talk about the good old days or a great show or something of that nature, who do you talk to? Because it can't be a lot of people that are in your in your circle, if you will, that can right. share with you. If I can give you an example, when we go to a family reunion, we talk about how pop up fell down or how grandma hit pop up. Or, <laughs> everybody knows about it, but everybody doesn't knows about the great shows that you've done That's overseas right. and places like that because everybody's right. not there. Who do you talk to, or how do you satisfy right. that 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 quest to talk about something like that? Um, to tell the truth, I, I talk to more mu musicians. That's one. Okay. Uh, uh, back in the day, my mother passed away, but she used to come to a lot of my shows. Okay. And my children come to a lot of my shows. My daughter, my oldest son, my youngest son came to some of them. Okay. And, uh, you know, wife and children, I talk to them. 
I get inspiration from them. Okay. And it makes me do a great show. When I think about my mother, it makes me do a great show. Gotcha. When I think about Phyllis Hyman, it makes me do a great show. Okay. So okay. all those inspirations. Fantastic. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just an interesting question. I was thinking about this afternoon when I was uh, on the road driving. I just thought that uh, it would be an interesting question to ask you. I think it's a good question mm -hmm. to ask anybody, but somebody of your status, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because like I said, there's not many people in this music business that are still around, if you will, Thanks. that have your status or are above you, that type of thing. Thanks. Okay, Thanks. thank you. I want to say hello to somebody I grew up with. Sure. In the, pro in the Richard Allen Home Projects. I was there for th 13 years. Okay. Wow. Bill Cosby. He lived I was in the house. Uh, uh, you were actually neighbors. Uh, I was actually neighbors. about him. That's the neighbor. So, mm -hmm. Two uh, doors down. I don't know. Some kind of way he might hear this program. I just want to shout out to him yes. and tell him I love him. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. One of my yes. favorite all time comedians, all time favorite. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking at the other stuff. I'm looking at what you know, what he brought to the uh, entertainment world. You guys right. were like four doors apart or something. Four, right? doors, four doors down, yeah. Four doors down. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. I was in and out of his house. I was in and out of his house, uh, playing all types of things with his brother Russell. Okay. Wow. We okay. Very close. Okay. Wow. Okay. And the thing I admired about Bill Cosby that he used to hit the ball out the ballpark. He was great in football. He was great in track, and I love what he did. Uh, he wasn't my favorite comedian or nothing like that. Okay. But I enjoyed him. I, I enjoyed his TV shows, and mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I enjoyed him giving money to all those colleges that he gave money to. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. And so, I don't, you know, those are the things, the good things I, I liked about him. I got you. I got you. Yeah, that, I got that's you. how I know him. I don't I know him no other way. Right. That's right. right. I got, very good. I got in some trouble, but you know, I'm not gonna talk about that. Right. I like what you right. said. Right. 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 I like Ma that. Uh, I like that. Magnificent, magnificent seven. What he just said is something that needs to be said over mm -hmm. and over and over again. And it's certainly something that needs to be said to uplift all of the people right. who step that way. What I ask you guys. Do me a favor. Let's give him a nice round of applause. Like we said, that's right. Great words. Great words. Yes. Words. yes. Now, Norman, yes. you said that you're going, getting ready to go um, on, uh, go out again uh, and travel the world with, with your music and what have you. What's your do? What's your date for leaving, and how long is the tour going to be? Well, I don't necessarily know. I, I'm quite sure I'm going to keep working from now to till the end of the year. And then I'm gonna come back next year uh, with the new album. Okay. Actually, the new album is gonna come out this year. Okay. Okay. Another three months. Okay. So the royalty has uh, all these great people on it. Okay. And I'm also writing a book. Ooh. Yeah, I'm writing a book about my life story. Okay. And, awesome. And, and one of the nice things about me is I, I was a jazz musician all my life, and uh, I've been playing since I was three years old. Wow. And in my projects, I was very fortunate to go to some major rehearsals by Lee Morgan. Mm -hmm. uh, in my projects across the street from me, there was a bass player, his name was Spanky DeBress. And he ended up going with, with uh, he ended up playing with Art Blake and the Jazz Message. Okay. And right mm -hmm. in the corner, actually right across, mm -hmm. the, right across the street, right across the way, there wasn't no street inside the projects. Uh, was a great <laughs> drummer that I, I was very influenced, very influenced by. His name was uh, Lex Humphreys, and Lex Humphreys, when he when he moved to New York, he he, he started playing with Donald Byrd. Mm -hmm. He walked with, with Art Blake and the Jazz Messengers. Okay. Frankie the Breast with Art Blake and the Jazz Messengers, and McC the keyboard player. He didn't live in the projects, but he came to the rehearsals. His name was McCoy Tyner. And we all know that McCoy Tyner yes. went with John Coltrane. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. So yes. they played yes. all summer, rehearsed, and I was right there at the rehearsals. Wow. And at that time, I probably was maybe eight years old. Wow. That's a great they story. They were teenagers. 
Uh, Norman, I, I, I say this, I, I don't mean to be redundant because it may be the first time you've heard me say it, but the Magnificent Seven and the listening audience hear me say it all the time on my radio shows, my TV shows. The music is wonderful. And if you see everybody shaking their head about your music, you want to have a starship, Valentine, the music is wonderful. But you know what's better than the music? It's the stories behind the music that make it happen. That's what you see. Everybody's enjoying the stories here. And that's what makes so the next time that they hear Valentine and Starship, they'll remember this interview that we're this talk that we've had, and the stories now start to flow in and make you feel better. It's a great thing. I think it's a great thing. It is. Oh, yeah. It is. Uh-huh. It is. It and, is. And look out! I'm great. Um, look out for the documentary. This, it's going to be done on me. I'm going to do a Hopefully. documentary. Hopefully, it 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 hit Netflix, and maybe BT or, or and some yeah, of those. Yeah, TV one. Yeah. Okay. okay. Some of those platforms. One new okay. platform. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, somebody wow. of with your reputation and longevity has certainly the credentials and the mm-hmm. information to get into those type of doors. But when you do, just remember the Magnificent Seven. We'll we'll come along and just shake hands if necessary. Right. You know what I mean? Okay, Magnificent Absolutely. Seven. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. Anybody else got any comments or concerns uh, that they'd like to share with? Um, go ahead, uh, uh, Professor. Do you think you'll be traveling during your tour? Will you stop in Philly? Oh yeah, I did Thank the you. last time I played in Philly. Uh-huh. We did a tribute to Phyllis Hyman at the Clef Club. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, Bowen, and, Washington. And, Bowen, and they, they turned to, they turned away about two hundred people. It was so packed. We did two shows. Right. So, uh, we, we're trying to work. Trying to get a gig in Philly now. Uh, as as a matter of fact, the people from the Clef Club, I'm going to be doing a master class along with a along with two shows, a concert. Okay. Wow. In Philly okay. within okay. The, awesome. I say within the, mm-hmm. I think within the, by October. Okay. 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 The club club be opening up in October. Now I might yeah. be doing something before we do the club club, but but we play in Philly real soon. Okay. Good. Like he was posted. That's please one of our major places. Please yeah. tell Carl to let me know. Please, uh, Norman. Please tell Carl to let me know. Oh yes. yeah, that, yeah. You know, because they're gonna have it. It's gonna be big time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Drew, you had a question. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Uh, Norman, can you talk to us about what, what, or who led you to Michael Henderson? I mean, he's from Detroit. He was established up there. Uh, but can you talk about your, the relationship with Michael Henderson? Because obviously, mm-hmm. once you two hooked up, it, it was like a gold mine for you guys. Yes, so, what led you to Michael Henderson? Michael Henderson, you know, Miles played some of everything, and he's played so beautiful. Uh, a lot of the standards and my funny Valentine and all those beautiful songs. So Miles mm-hmm. changed his style. Uh, he was, Miles be, started to become very uh, influenced by uh, Jimi Hendrix and Sly Stone and those type of people, and even mm-hmm. Prince. And when, when Miles right. changed his style, he changed his music and he got different, newer musicians. Okay. And Michael Henderson, uh, someone told, told him that there was a great, bass player by the name of Michael Henderson. And at that time, Michael was playing with Stevie Wonder. And Miles went to Detroit or or something like oh, that. Wow. And he got, wow. he brought back Michael Henderson. And he wow. told me Michael Henderson was, a, was one of the greatest electric bass players in the world. Wow. So wow. that's where I met. And I was always over Miles' house. I used to spend hours and hours over Miles' house. I used to go with him when he trained and boxed. And I would run errands for him, and and uh, mm. I would I would take a towel. I mean, he 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 could have been a a, a professional boxer, maybe mm. a champion, I if he went that, that way. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So I was always with Miles. Miles was the one that intro- introduced me to Duke mm. Ellington. Mm. Duke Ellington came <laughs> over Miles's house, and Miles introduced me. He used to call me Little Philly. He said, "Dude." <laughs> Meet little Philly. Little Philly. <laughs> I like that. Little Philly. <laughs> That's, a nice like that. That's a nice nickname. That's a nice nickname. Yeah. So I, I met a lot of people through Miles. I was with him all the time. He, he liked me from the time I met him. And I learned a lot from him. And he was in love with John Culture. And he loved the, he loved the musicians from Philly. OK. Right. Philly, between Philly and Detroit, 
they had so many had it, uh, had groups. That's true. Singers, That's true. Singers, mm. jazz, and R and B. Okay, and that's what it's I'm interesting about. how it's I'm interesting how some of those, but I crossed over into R and B. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, so I know everybody in both worlds, and that's a good yeah, thing. Best of both worlds. That's it. My music yeah. is both worlds. Yes, it is. Yes, yes, yeah. it is. yes. Some of it. Yes, it is. It didn't start out like that, though. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think it's amazing how musicians from Detroit and Philly were able to mesh together yeah. and create from there. That that's mm -hmm. I, I find that very intriguing. I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I was always it was. I love, if I wasn't a jazz musician, I wanted to be a Delphonic. Didn't I blow your mind? That's the truth. My group is that right? That's my group. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I man. love the Delphonics. I wanted to be a Delphonic at one time, but I was too far going in jazz. Okay. So okay. I did. I do some of their music though. Right. Right. I, do, uh -huh. I like the stylistics too. Okay. I like old Philly groups. Okay. I'm okay. Melvin and Blue Notes featuring Teddy Pendergrass. Okay. He's still better than that. Okay. And I like the groups in Detroit too. I like the, the oh, Temptations. Yeah. And I like uh, Stevie Wonder. Yeah. I like Marvin Gaye. I like. I like, mm -hmm. I like them all. Music is universal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Music is universal. Well, all you, good music. All good music. Good. Music what you, is what you, what when you great opened great. up in the beginning of the conversation, and you were saying that uh, you alluded to the fact that the music is the key, and then I came back and said it's the stories behind it. Well, all mm -hmm. of that goes together. All of that goes mm -hmm. together. Yeah. The Magnificent Seven uh, yes, are, are, are people who love the music and we've been doing yes. this i told you we've been doing this for about six about eight eight ten months now we've been doing every yes. friday night and oh, it's just amazing yeah. everybody's story norman comes back to the same thing that you've been promoting all along and that's yeah. love it yeah. comes yeah. back to that it always comes back to that and that's why right. this can't be more worldwide spread is a big question to me i don't understand because you know there's a lot of crazy stuff going on out there in the world but everybody will take a moment and stop and listen to some music. That's right. And it's the kind of music that you get, people like you, you and people like you create that make us pause and listen to this and remember and feel and and, and go forth with our lives. Yes. I applaud yes. you. I applaud you and I tip my hat to you. I mean, tip my hat too. I, I don't right. think of a, a better person that we could end Black Music Month with than yourself. Right. I don't really see right. another person that we could do it with. Right. Oh, that, ma right. that makes me feel very good. Yeah, Thank you. Right. I, I, I worked hard. Oh, I worked yeah. hard all my life, but I, I enjoyed my work. I enjoyed my work immensely. Mm. Oh. See, that shows. makes a difference when you enjoy something you're doing. You have yeah. passion for it. Stop. Yes, it does. In the name of love. There hey. you go. <laughs> all right. I love there you it. go. All right, uh, we got any closing statements because we're about nine minutes away from closing out. Donna, go ahead, baby. Yes, I just wanted to touch on something that um, Drew said he finds it um, something about the Philly, Philly uh, groups Detroit. and Detroit mm -hmm. and how they mm -hmm. come together. So mm -hmm. I guess yes. there's yes. always been a history with Philly and Detroit. And a younger group actually made a song about it, which was Boys to Men. Right. And it was called the East Coast Family. That's well, great. in that mm -hmm. song, they're singing about Detroit, Philadelphia, yeah. Yeah. and the Motown sound and the Philly sound. That is what they're talking about. So they mm -hmm. realized that for many years, uh, Detroit, Philadelphia, those type of areas, uh, which is considered the East Coast, um, has always come together and did really well, done really well in the music world. Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. no fact. Right, mm -hmm. a mutual right. respect between those two cities, man. Very yeah. talent. So that's that's it. why it's called the East right. Coast for that yeah. Motown Philly. Motown Philly. Motown Philly. Philly. Motown Philly. Motown Philly. Motown Philly. Motown Philly. The right. East Coast swing. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. you listen that's to right. their word. That's what. They're talking about Old town Philly. That's right. Mm -hmm. Norman, let me ask you. Are you Norman, you were gonna say something? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, do you are you familiar with George Kerr? With who? George Kerr. George Kerr? Yeah. 
I heard that name. Okay, he, I, he, I just he asked. A comedian? He, no, 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 no. He's a writer, producer. He's the one that he's responsible for the moment. He's a moment. He's responsible for producer. Linda Jones. He's responsible. For, he sings himself. He took Little Anthony's place from Little Anthony and Imperials when he left. I got you. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. he's a writer, producer, arranger like yourself. I'm quite, sure, well. I'm quite sure I met him before. He's responsible for the escorts. Remember the group that was in jail, Raw Ray Prison? Yeah. He's responsible for them. Okay. He was the only yeah. guy to go in the prison and get them to come out and do the performance. The only person that ever did that in the musical world. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, I was just wondering like if that. you know him. I was just wondering if you know him, that's all. Yeah. Any, anybody yeah. else got a comment or close? Because we're going to close up. Well, I, I just want to say. Oh, wait a minute. Go ahead, Rita. Mr. Connors, I just wanted to know, what was the driving force uh, that pushed you towards R&B? To focus more on that. Well, the thing about R and B, my first, uh, uh, I mean, people like Aretha Franklin, and and like I said, all the singing groups and and uh, uh, all the great singing groups that, that I, I that I adore and admire, it, it was just so much. And, and I, I, I never try to, I never broke things up. Like one thing is jazz, another thing is R&B. Okay. Because some of the best R&B was produced by great jazz people. Yes. Mm. yes. Michael Jackson sold, what, close to 100 million records? But Quincy Jones produced, his, produced the records. Right. And he was jazz. Right. Right. So it's a very thin line yeah. between R and B and jazz. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I agree. Good okay. question, Rita. Drew, Thank you had you. something? Okay. Who was? Drew, I was no, I'm sorry, Rosie was next. Go ahead, Rosie. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Connors, I just want to say, I just want to say thank you again. And I know my mom's smiling up, I'm up looking down here and smiling, but she she, she would she give you a hug, and I would too if I could. But thank you, and I and I agree with Ollie. It's the stories behind the songs. They really tell us about you. Like you got started and how you discovered Stanley Clark. You started with Billy Paul. All this here is so interesting. So that's the story behind it. So I just thank you for your presence. I thank you for sharing what you did. And like I said, when I see you, I'm gonna give you a big hug, Pisces. Okay, big hug. <laughs> you and I. All right, March first and March 9th. We're yeah. gonna do it. But thank yeah. you again. And March 11th. And March 11th. Thank that's you. right. March 11th. <laughs> wow, all these Pisces, huh? And Pisces, yeah. that's about love. It's about love. That's right. Yeah. I'm getting yeah, hydrated again. Oof. Yes, it is. Thank that's you again. Love. That's a lot of love right there, just being a Pisces. Yes, it is. That's what you get. You get no better than that. We're about love. That's it. That's it. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> all right. Well, Norman, again, all, all due success to you. Uh, we wish you well on behalf of myself and the Magnificent. Mark, you there? You wanted to say something real quick? Yeah, I just want to make a comment. Um, out of all the guests we've had and shows we've had and people we've had, I've had more people talk about Mr. Connor's music and how it hit their lives. It's incredible. The chat room is going crazy about um, Starship. Valentine mm -hmm. Love and all the songs that he's written, everybody has used it in graduations and weddings. Some guys have said they've been rapping to the music underneath. I'm gonna get their name, Mr. Connor. They owe you some money. But um, <laughs> it's been really, really, really good. The last one was from Monroe, Georgia. That is Sabra Oliver, who has just been educated to the point where she's been listening to this music all of her life and never knew who wrote the song until just now. Wow. wow. She was playing and dancing to Norman Connor's music and was like, wow, this is who mm -hmm. wrote the music I have in my car. So this has been an iconic one, guys, from a music perspective. Yeah. You know, we got South Carolina with Annie August and we got Linda Porter Tyson. People are just chiming in. It's, it, it's monumental. The chat room is going through awesome. craziness. That's all. That's great. I'm out. Thank you, Mark. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Well, again, uh, uh, Mr. Connors, on behalf of the Magnificent Seven, we thank you for spending time yes. with us on a Friday night. We know that yes. I know that you're busy, 
trying yes. to produce some things and what have you, but to take time out of your busy schedule right. Thank and you. hang out with us for a little bit has been yes. awesome. And again, I say, to you, I say to you again that Absolutely. I couldn't think of a better person to close out Black Music Month than right. yourself on our show. So we salute you, yes. we wish you all the best, and I'm gonna be in touch with Carl to get some of the, uh, the CD, the scarves, and whatever's gonna be happening to make sure that the Magnificent, that we all get to something, we support you the yes. best. Yes. yes. I wanna say one thing. Go ahead. I have, I have two CDs that, that's out right now, and a lot of the young people who missed my stuff when it first came out back in the day, they could get it now. Uh, I have two CDs, it's called, the. Be the best of Norman Connors, okay. uh, Volume One. It okay. has the Starship and and uh, Bet You by Golly Wow and all those songs wow. on it. I just finished a vo Volume Two, so I got okay. a Volume One, Volume Two with most of my hits on it. Okay. And, and 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 some of the stuff that I did with Herbie Hancock and people like Buster Williams and Ron Carter and and the, and that that music is on there too. Okay. So all right. those two CDs is out now. Okay. If you come out, you can get it probably on CD Baby or or wherever right. they sell selling things at, and you can get it on the internet, or you can Facebook or whatever. Right. Okay. Okay. All, of All right. right. Well, again, we, we my own label, uh, Starship International Records. Okay. All right. Starship International. Right. Well, we here, we in Philadelphia in the tri-state area, will continue to support one of our own. Yes. We love you. We thank Absolutely. you. God bless yes. you. And we're going to say good night to everybody. Good night. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.